Well, thank you for having me. It's always a joy, always a privilege to come. Uh, you'll have to forgive me tonight. I was walking in with Sister Louie. I dropped my glasses and they shattered all of them. And I'm getting old, so I have to have them to read. So, anyway, so if I'm preaching and they fall off my face, don't worry about it, all right? So, anyway, how are you tonight? Blessed. Blessed. Awesome. Praise God. Praise God. Well, <coughs> our Lord is great, isn't he? I'm so glad to be here instead of behind a TV watching the Super Bowl, right? This is better than any Super Bowl. I can tell you who's going to win anyway. I can tell you right now who's going to win. The, one who's, the team that scores the most points. Right? That's who's going to win. <laughs> They're all just got tons of money anyway, so it doesn't matter. So. Praise God. I love football. I love sports. But I would rather be in the house of God than any of that stuff. Amen. Praise God. Well, listen, tonight I, I want to talk to you. How many of you know that the Old Testament is written for our example? In other words, when you read it, you can find yourself probably in a lot of those people. And it's written to show us the promises of God and how God really works in our lives. And so you need to read the entire Bible to really get the true character of God. And as you read the Old Testament, it, it just teaches you so much. And I've been reading through the Bible for years with my father-in-law, as many years as it's been going on, I think. But I always try to, try to keep up. But tonight, we're going to talk about a couple of characters in the Old Testament. First... First, let me ask you a question. Who tonight wants to be free? Do you really know what that means? Okay. What does freedom mean to you? Think about it for a moment. What? From something to something. From something to something. But a lot of times people think that freedom means money, right? If I had all the money, man, I'd be free. A lot of times people... Uh, maybe think that there's no burdens, right? I don't have any problems. I'm free. I'm, I, you know, no big deal. No, no record. How about that? There's no record of wrong in my life, right? I'm free. No one telling me what to do. I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> you know, if you want all of those things, and a lot of times people do, uh, what you're saying is you want heaven on earth, and that's just not going to happen, Right? Freedom has nothing to do with your circumstances, but your mindset. Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you are free indeed. I love that. I love that. You know, basically, you know, guys, if you are in Jesus and if you know him and you're loving him and you're serving him, you are free indeed. I love I, how, how John puts that last part on there. You are free indeed. Because there's lots of different kinds of freedoms, right? Freedom is how you accept what Christ has done for you. The only one who can keep you trapped is you. You, listening to the wrong voices. You, living in that sin. You, allowing Satan to remind you of the old. Allowing <coughs> Satan to keep you trapped in the old mindset. That is what keeps you trapped, right? See, there is a feeling of freedom, and then there is freedom indeed. Yeah. Jesus gives us freedom indeed. True freedom comes only in Christ by believing, by serving, by growing in Him. In reading in Exodus again, I came across a scripture that is very hard to understand sometimes. And I want to read that in just a few moments. But first, let me kind of set everything up here tonight. All the way back to the beginning of Exodus. Where we have Moses, 
being born. Now Moses from birth was called to take Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. But Moses, like many of us, he got off track. He, get, he got off track. He was raised in Pharaoh's court. He goes out and he kills an Egyptian. And then he had to flee from Pharaoh. Pharaoh finds out, so he had to flee. You know, I don't know. You know, for some reason, I think that really wasn't what God had in plan at that moment. But God, like he does us, may sometimes take us around the long way, but he always brings us back if we're faithful. For 40 years, Moses is in the backside of the desert. He's back in the desert, taking care of sheep. And then one day, he's walking, taking care of his sheep, and he sees this burning bush. He goes to this burning bush, and the burning bush begins to talk to him. Now think about this for a few moments. You know, first of all, a bush is burning out in the middle of the backside of a desert, and you go up to it, and the bush calls out to you to take your shoes off. He's standing on holy ground. God speaks to him through this burning bush. You know what? I want to tell you something right now. God's got a call for you. He will do whatever it takes for you to hear His voice. He may take you to the backside of the desert. He may take you to the, the, the worst times of your life, but He will speak to you. But God says, Moses, it's time for you to fulfill the call that I put on your life, the reason you're on this earth. I want you to go back and get my kids out of Egypt. <laughs> and Moses Moses says, but not me, Lord, and comes up with this list of excuses of why he can't. But God doesn't listen to them. He eliminates them all. Finally starts to get upset with Moses, but Moses finally listens to God. And he assures Moses of victory before he even starts. Isn't that cool? How would you like to do that? Well, guess what? You can because of Jesus, right? But in, in Exodus chapter 7, let me read a few verses to you. Chapter 7, verse, verse 1. So the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. You shall speak all that I command you. And Aaron, your brother, shall tell Pharaoh to send the children of Israel out of, out of, the land, out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not heed you, so that I may lay my hand on Egypt and bring my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgment. And the, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. Then Moses and Aaron did so, just as the Lord commanded them, so they did. And Moses was 80 years old, Aaron 83 years old, when they spoke to Pharaoh. A couple of thoughts there, first of all. I love how God refers to his children as the army, his army. They're in captivity, but God sees them as a mighty army. You may not be where you need and want to be right now, but God sees you as powerful in Him. And I love it because, you know, how many of you have thought about this? Well, it's too late for me. I'm too old. I'm too old. Yeah, I mean, some, some of you guys are like kids and you're saying I'm too old. Baloney. <laughs> Moses is 80. His brother's 83. And they follow God's call. So there's no excuse with the age thing here, right? But the scripture I want to bring out to you tonight is something that's, that sometimes tri trips people up. And it's something that jumped off the page, and I began to share it, and, and began to look at it, and God said, I want you to talk about this in Church on the Street. So I'm talking about it in Church on the Street. That's why I love Church on the Street. I can share my heart, and you, you listen. But here's the scripture. I will harden... Pharaoh's heart. God said to Moses, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. What does that mean? It looks like a cruel God, doesn't it? Looks like he, it's, it's a cruel God. He's going to make Pharaoh's heart hard so that 
You know, is that Pharaoh's call is to, to die? No. No. A lot of people get messed up with it. I'm going to explain it in just a second. But then came the confrontations of Pharaoh and the plagues. How many plagues were there? Ten. Ten plagues in all. And of course the first nine were kind of messy. I mean, kind of nasty. How would you like to get up in the morning and you turn on the faucet and blood comes out? You know, how would you like to, to have, um, uh, you know, flies everywhere? I can't stand those things, can you? And one time, I honestly experienced this because I took my sons to play baseball. I always coached them. We went up to Wickenburg to play in a, in a baseball game. And there was a, a swarm of grasshoppers that came over in the field. They could hardly see. Grasshoppers were everywhere. And the kids were up there just kind of waiting on deck to bat and killing them on the floor <laughs> on the ground. They were entertaining themselves. We went to get into the car. They all flew in the car and you sat on them. It was really gross. Could you imagine what this is like in all of Egypt except for the children of Israel? All of these, these plagues were going on. And each time, Pharaoh would call Moses, Moses would pray, and God would relieve them of the plague. And then as soon as Moses leaves Pharaoh, Pharaoh's heart would harden and wouldn't let the children of Israel go. What does that mean? He hardened his heart. The hardening of Pharaoh's heart simply means God let him go his own determined way. That's it. That's what it means. God doesn't force us to anything. He gives us a freedom of choice. And you can either obey God or you can disobey God. You can either follow Him or not follow Him. The choice of obeying or disobeying was Pharaoh's, <coughs> just like you and I. Pharaoh, like many of us, only wanted relief, however, from the pain of sin rather than freedom from it. You notice it? You know, pressure's coming in. I mean, blood is everywhere. I mean, the people are miserable. People are in pain. They're crying out to Pharaoh. Pharaoh is hurting. He calls Moses in and says, we're going to let you go. Okay? So the pain is relieved. And what does Pharaoh do? Decides, no, I'm not going to obey anymore. I feel better now. I feel better now, so I'm not going to obey. I, I, I'm okay now. So it keeps going the same way. Another plague comes along. Well, he does the same thing nine, ten times. Ten times. We, we look at this and we go, that's just crazy. What a fool. But I want to tell you something. We all know people like this, and we all have done this. Every one of us. If we refuse to obey God, we lose our sensitivity, and our hearts grow harder and harder and harder. We can all have a little Pharaoh in all of us. Every one of us. We can all be like this Pharaoh. We can. And that is why we have difficulty living freedom indeed. Okay, I want to connect this. This is why we don't experience the true freedom that God has for us. Because this Pharaoh spirit comes upon us. We think we have life figured out. We think we are okay. We think we're doing well. And then, and then God asks us to do something, but we refuse. We refuse. We disobey. <laughs> Then all of a sudden things come at us, we wonder why. <laughs> There's a little Pharaoh in all of us. So tonight, using this story of Pharaoh, I want to show you how you can live free indeed. Overcoming that Pharaoh spirit, I'll call it tonight. That Pharaoh spirit, that little Pharaoh it always comes up every now and again in all of us. It doesn't matter where you are in life. What is against you and what you are facing, you can 
can be free indeed. So let's let's identify this Pharaoh spirit tonight. I mean, there's a lot of different things we could go into, but I'm just going to give you a few simple points tonight about this Pharaoh spirit. And then we'll look at how you overcome it. The first thing about Pharaoh and a Pharaoh spirit is this. The Pharaoh spirit wants control. Wants control. Now, if you don't get anything else tonight, get this one, all right? Because this is huge. We all want control, don't we? We all want to be in control of our lives. And this is Pharaoh. He wants control. Israel had boosted Egypt's economy incredibly. And, and I mean, they were doing a lot of the work. They were making Egypt go. Things were working. All right? And then... Moses comes in and says, no, you got to let God's people go. Pharaoh says, are you kidding me? I'm in control here. I'm not changing anything. I don't know this God you're talking about. I'm not going to change anything. And continues on that process. <laughs> you know, Israel made life easy for the Egyptians. So Pharaoh wasn't about to let him go. You know, there's a fear. There was a fear of what life was going to be like after all the Israelites had left. Yeah. Imagine Pharaoh thinking about that. What am I going to do? How can I run this country? Shoot, now we have to work harder. Now things will be really tough. All of our workers are leaving. But I want to tell you something. We all have a fear of letting go. We all have a fear of letting go of the controls to God. And I want to tell you something, somebody that's lived it. If you don't let go, let go of the controls, if you don't let, it's going to be tougher on you. It's going to be hard on you. Because God loves you so much. He's saying, you don't know how to lead your life. If you did, you wouldn't be here. Let me lead it for you. Give me the controls. Give me your problems. Give me your situation. Give me the issues that you are facing in your life. And guys, I'm going to tell you something. It doesn't mean just by saying it. Let me tell you where it comes from. You've got to release the controls here in your heart. You've got to come to that point in your life where it's like, you know what? Nothing else matters but God. And let go of that control. Let it go. Even if our lifestyle is an addictive one or that relationship is bad, sometimes that's all we know and we don't want to let go. We don't want to let go of it. Sometimes what God is demanding us to, to let go of seems good to us. It may not be something bad or horrible, but God is saying, let go and let me lead. That season of your life is over. Amen. Let it go. You can find a sense of freedom in sin. You really can. And all of you know that. But it's short-lived. And it's certainly limiting. Jesus set you free indeed. Indeed. I love what... It's written in Hebrews. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, you know, there are people, the witnesses, and it just came from the, the faith chapter. So you can imagine, you know, all these witnesses and great people of faith cheering you on. Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, think about this for a moment. He says, let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside those things that are controlled, that, that, that control, that we think we have to have, Amen. that we think we need, that we think it's important. He says, no, you lay it aside. You lay it down. 
Every weight means anything good or bad that is causing us to hold on to the controls of our lives. I've had to walk away from money. I've had to walk away from opportunities, a great ministry. I've had to walk away from friends that I thought would be with me forever. Good friends. But you know what God says? That season's over. Let go. Let me guide. Let me guide. And some of you tonight may be right there. There's people in your life that God has said, look, you got to let me control. you got to let go. you got to let go of those people. You've got to let go of bad influence, good influences of the past. you got to let go of everything in your life. And you got to let me take over and consume you. Guys, until we do, we will never see the full power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Until you say, Lord, it's all up to you. My life is in your hands and your hands only. Let go of the controls if you want to overcome the Pharaoh spirit. When God delivers you, don't look back. Don't relent. Don't second guess. See the big picture. The big picture that he has for you. I, I, was, I, I think about this often. I, I get to think, and I, in fact, my wife and I got into a discussion and, uh, about this. I got to think about what would happen if Pharaoh would have just let Israel go and blessed them. What would have happened? Man, that would have been amazing, wouldn't it? What would have happened if he just decided, well, no, I'm going to obey this God. I'm going to let Israel go. I don't know, I just think about crazy stuff like that. Many of you still think about the past. Listen to me. This is important. Those who hurt you, you still think about it. Those disappointments, that pain, that, those issues in your life. You know, and those people that have hurt you in, in the situations that have happened, those people have moved on. All right? And if you keep thinking about it and you don't let go and let God, you are allowing them to torment you still. You ever think, you ever think about that? When you start talking about, oh yeah, you know, yeah, that guy really hurt me. You're taking the controls back from God. Okay, first of all. Yeah, you know what? I really failed. You're taking the controls back from God. You're, you're working right into the hands of Satan. Because he is the tormentor. You know, when you gave your life to Christ, all things become new. Everything. And it will stay new unless you start thinking about the old sins. Unless you start thinking about how you messed up. Some of you are sitting there thinking about it right now. Okay? You are. I know you are. You're lost in it. You're lost in it. Listen. You have a new life in Christ. You have a new future. Listen to this scripture. Listen to what the big picture is. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. The Pharaoh spirit is a spirit of control, wanting control. And if you want control of your life, you're never going to find the plans God has for you. What does it mean to let God have control? It means starting over. Saying, Lord, I'm yours. I'm going to obey you. I'm going to obey you. I'm going to do everything you want me to do. Err on the side of obeying God. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're like, well, I don't know if it's God or not. He knows your heart. So when He speaks to your heart, and if you're reading His Word, and you're in prayer, you will hear from Him right. Obey Him, and He will follow you. Now, the second thought about a Pharaoh spirit. The Pharaoh spirit refuses change. Refuses change. Pharaoh did not want change. To let go means change. 
But you cannot hold on to the old and change the way God intends for you to change. You can't do that. Pharaoh did not want to let go. Like Pharaoh, we refuse to change and God demands, demands it. Our hearts grow hard in rebellion if we refuse to change. I want to talk to you about this, guys. Because I have seen it even in mega churches and people who have been Christians all of their lives. They refuse to change. They think they've come to that point where they've got it all figured out. They think they've come to that point where, you know what, I'm comfortable in my life, I'm where I need to be, and, and I don't need to change. And so many times, people really fight God changing. I want to tell you something. If you are not challenged in your faith, if you are not challenged in a task that God has for you, you are not growing. Amen. You're not if you're not challenged in the faith and you're not doing something powerful for God, you're not growing. Bottom line. That's been my wife and I. So We've been so frustrated with that because we feel like we haven't been doing anything during this, I don't know, this season of waiting. You know, we get so antsy. We want to jump ahead of God. I've done that a couple of times because I love challenges. I love a faith challenge. I love to grow in God. I love to hear Him. I love to know His voice. When we are forced, when we force God's hand and we refuse to change, we pay dearly. If we survive, that is. But like Pharaoh, God gives many chances. At any time in those plagues, Pharaoh could have changed. And he didn't. Okay? God gives chances. <coughs> Luke chapter 18, verse, maybe Matthew. Matthew or Luke, I forget which one it is. But it's the story of the rich young ruler. Yeah, it's another story. Right? I guess Luke 18. Rich young ruler. You know, Jesus was ministering, and this young guy comes up who has lots of money. And he asked Jesus, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus tells him, well, you need to obey the commandments. You need to follow what God says to do. He said, oh, I do that. I follow all of the commandments. I'm a good guy. So this kind of reminds me of our today, today's society and church. You know, I, I do all that. I'm good. I'm good. And But Jesus said something to him. Listen to this. He says, when Jesus heard this, he said to him, one thing, you lack. Sell all that you have and, distrib and distribute it to the poor. And you will have treasures in heaven. And come and follow me. But when he heard these things, he became very sad, for he was extremely rich. Hmm. Now, I read you the story and tell you the story for this. Most Christians think they live the scriptures. They really believe that they know God and they live God. Even though they're not reading His Word, they think they know God and live God's Word. Okay? And have arrived where God wants them. Listen, if you arrive on earth where God wants you, you're in trouble. I, I, this is something I've always preached and something I've always believed is that we should ever be growing in God. We should ever be challenged, and we should ever be moving forward. If God has blessed you with a tremendous amount of money, then God wants you, expects a lot out of you. If God has, has, has just rescued you, and God has, is setting you free, then God wants you to grow continuously. He didn't rescue you just so you could settle. He rescued you so you could make a difference. Amen. Amen. Listen, I, 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 you know, I'm just, I told you I'm just sharing my heart because I've been around a lot of churches the last couple of years, preached in a few of them, seen a few of the believers. And you know, it saddens my heart when I, I, I see Christians who are doing nothing with their faith. It really frustrates me. 
And we see our country just going spiraling downward fast. Right? I mean, going down and down and down. Yeah. You know, and Christians are like, boy, that's sad. Get on Facebook and complain. <laughs> Twitter out some bad words. Okay? Honestly. And, and yet their lives are nothing. They live in their homes, nice homes, drive their nice cars, go to their nice churches, sit in their nice pews, and do it all over again the next week. Never doing anything. Don't settle. I would say, when I hear what you guys are doing at church on the street, it, it, it just fires me up. Ramon, you, you fire me up, brother, what you're doing. That's great. Listen. Tell you something. I want to tell you something right now. This is something I really feel. If God, if we're going to have revival in this country, it's with people like you guys. You have been there. You've been in the mud, the muck, and the mire. God has brought you out. Now you can settle or you can say, no, no, no. I'm going to do something about what I've seen. I'm going to do something about what I've experienced. You might be, may be like Moses saying, well, I don't have the goods to face Pharaoh. Yes, you do. Amen. With God, all things are impossible. Amen. Jesus, in Christ, you can do anything and everything that he puts in your heart to do. I don't know, that's just a sidebar tonight that I really feel, I really feel that you underestimate your faith in your, your life. That sometimes we get to a... Com a, a completion of the program here at, at church on the street and, and then what do I do? That's the launching pad. That's the launching pad. It's time to get moving. It's time to, to take what you have learned and how you have grown and now start stepping out of faith yourself. What a revival you could have in Phoenix, right? Because of you guys. That's a, you're an army. It's the army of God. <laughs> Jesus always demands growth. And there is not growth, not any growth without change. And there's no change without pain. You've gone through a lot of pain. That means God is just growing you further, right? Be willing to walk on water for God. Be willing to do it. Rob and I were talking about this. We have a lot of time to discuss the Bible. Our relationship is built on the Word of God. It's just funny. Amen. We'll sit and talk for hours about God's Word. We talked about Peter walking on water the other day. She goes, you know, I just wonder what would happen if he would have made it to Jesus. <laughs> it would have been a totally different thing in his life if he would have made it to Jesus by walking on water, right? But he didn't. He looked down and went under. <laughs> he would have made it to Jesus. Think of what he, what powerhouse he would have been. Amazing. I mean, he still had to one up on all the other disciples. You know, they can say what they want to say, but he can always say, "But I want to walk." <laughs> I don't know. We just talk about crazy stuff like this when it comes to the Word of God. What it simply means is be willing to step out in faith. Be willing to take the steps. Be willing to risk it all. Be willing to do what it takes. Grow. You will not grow unless you start walking on water. On, I'll just tell you right now. <laughs> the rich young ruler wasn't willing to go beyond where he was because it meant a change in his lifestyle. There was still one thing he needed to change in his life. His attitude and his dependency on money, on what he will. Now, he had one thing. What's your one thing? What's your one thing? You know, he may be saying, well, I'm doing all the good things. I'm doing this and this and this and this and this. You know what? What's the one thing that God is challenging you with today? What if Pharaoh would have let God's people go? I said that earlier, right? Well, let me go back to it. What if he would have blessed them? Let me tell you what would have happened. It would have changed history. 
It would have changed history. Egypt would probably still be a major powerhouse. Because you know why? God blesses those who bless his kids. We just think, think crazy. Anyway, let me give you one scripture on this. You know it. Paul writes it. He says, look guys, not that I have already attained this. If anybody could brag about spiritual growth, it would be this guy. He says, I haven't obtained it, or I am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing is, but one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind, straining forward to what lies ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. I've read that scripture thousands of times, I think. But I read it the other day when I was going through something, and Jesus kind of like... <laughs> back in the head. Read it again. <laughs> you know, read it again. And I read it again. And, and he began to speak to my heart about change, about letting go, about all I'm talking to you about tonight. Because what I went through, and I'm just going to be honest with you, because I can be, okay, but what I went through was there was a lot of injustice done. Some of my pastor friends, some of my, my own leaders did not keep their word, did not walk with me, did not help me. And I caught myself the other day talking about it. <clears throat> well, if they would have done this, that would have happened. If they would blaming, 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 right? And then I read that scripture. Forgetting... <laughs> What was back there? Stop letting Satan torment you. Those people are going on with their life and they're still tormenting you. Forget it. And move on. For the high calling. You know what the cool thing about that is? <laughs> is you, we all have this high calling of God. And he says, he says, press on for that high calling. Press on for it. Number three. The Pharaoh's spirit is careless. 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 He didn't care about anybody but himself. Pharaoh had no concern for others himself but himself. He hurt not only his own family but his entire nation. He destroyed the land. Nature, he destroyed. Because you know why? He could only care about himself. It's what I want. It's what I need. It's who I am. Right? And we all have a little Pharaoh in us. We all sometimes, sometimes we have to corral this every day. It's not what I want. It's what God wants. It's what he wants. I had... Somebody asked me that question. Well, what do you want to do with your life? And, and it got me to thinking. And I started thinking about what all the things I wanted to do with the life. And I finally come to this conclusion. It doesn't matter what I want to do with my life. I'm set aside for God. I'm set aside for Him. It's what He wants to do in my life. And what He wants to do for me and through me. And it's the same with each one of you. Some of you, I'll ask, if I were to ask you, what do you want to do with your life? And that's a great pop, pop psychology thing, you know. Well, <coughs> dream. Dream and go chase your vision. Go do this and do that and do that. And I agree you, to a certain extent. But you've got to make sure that you weigh it against what God is calling and wants you to do in your life. You understand what I mean? You know, because sometimes, I mean, what I want to do with my life is get up every day and go play golf with Pastor Wall. <laughs> he ain't golfing yet. 
you know, and, and, or go to Hawaii and just live on the beach or something, you know? Where, where, where'd that be? I mean, you'd go spiritually like that, won't you? Yeah, there you go. But I want to tell you something. Sometimes God, listen to me, sometimes God asks us to do things we hate doing. It's very uncomfortable. That is very, very against the grain. Sometimes he says, I want you to go do this. <coughs> this is what I want for you to do. You know, we need to understand our rebellion against God affects everyone around us. And if we don't do what he's asking us to do, even if it is uncomfortable, it's going to affect everyone. This was not going to be comfortable for Pharaoh. So he refused to do it. He didn't care about anyone else. When you care about others, you're willing to put yourself on the line. The Bible says this. This is a powerful scripture. It's when, when Saul went ahead of God and refused to do what God wanted him to do. It says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. <clears throat> because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. <sighs> Understand something here. I don't believe in witchcraft. I believe in demonic spirits. I do. I, you know, but that's what that is. You know, what this scripture is saying is... <laughs> You've got this spirit about you that is going to destroy everything and everybody around you because of your rebellion. It's as the spirit of witchcraft. Have you ever been around people who are insensitive to the needs of others? Their spirit's bad. They're selfish. They walk into a room and the whole room atmosphere just kind of goes downhill because it's all about them. You ever talk to somebody and the conversation always goes back to them? Yeah. You know, this is a Pharaoh spirit that just doesn't care about anybody else but themselves. It doesn't care about doing the will and the work of God. It doesn't care about it. That's what a Pharaoh spirit is. We are only concerned for ourselves. And this is against the true character of God. God's character is totally different. The Bible says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you Look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You get that? Amen. You've got to consider one another, their needs, more than your, yourself. Amen. Think about this, guys. It'll change an atmosphere of a room. Okay? Freedom comes when we care for others like Christ. When we hurt with them, we laugh with them, and we genuinely, authentically care for them. Amen. That's freedom. That's freedom. Dr. Fies Raman, as you know, he's been in jail. And he's still in jail. Got a report for you. Somebody else? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's got a hearing on Wednesday. And hopefully he's going to get out. He's been cleared of all charges. There's no charges. None at all. Uh, the only charges he his, his son and daughter went to see him. And they're there now. But, um, but they're visiting him, and, and even, even Tim's preaching tomorrow. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it's his son. But... Um, He's been cleared of all charges, but because it's a third world country, third world prison, their laws are different, you think, well, how can they hold him? Yeah. It's a third world country. And the paperwork hasn't been done yet. So that's all they're waiting on. 
I want to tell you something. Dr. Fies is doing this not because he wants this, not because it's comfortable. When he was going back, I had a meeting with him and went the, the day before he left, and he was concerned about what was going to happen. But because he's got 3,000 kids, he says, I've got to, I'm going to go do this. So he lays himself on the, the line for all these children. Guys, I want to tell you something. That's Christian faith. I want to tell you something. That's freedom. That's freedom. When you give yourself for others as Christ did for you, that's freedom. That's what it's all about. That's what makes us different in the church. John tells us, John says, when the outside sees the love that the church has for one another, that's going to witness to them and that's what's going to bring them to you. That's what John says. You know, enough of this stuff I see where Christians and churches are fighting at each other. I think it's so sad that we, 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 we beat up our brothers and sisters in Christ. I think it's so sad and you know, I, I have to wonder and I often think why we don't see the same miracles that the early church saw. And I think it has a lot to do with the brotherly love. I think it has a lot to do with the hurting for one another. Because if you remember, Barnabas started it. He saw needs in the church, within the body. He goes and sells all of his property, brings the money and gives it to the apostles and says, give it to those in need. Guys, that's when the Spirit of God can really move. That's when, I want to tell you something, what's going to happen in India? Fies is going to come out of there and there's going to be an amazing revival. Yes, yes. Amazing revival. I believe that. Because he laid it down the ground. He laid it all out for, him, for them. So let me, let me wrap up here. To overcome the Pharaoh spirit and live freedom. Live in freedom. The freedom that Jesus is talking about. Relinquish controls. You've got to quit trying to control yourself. Controlling your thoughts. I mean, controlling your life. Let God, let God take care of it. Welcome change. In fact, chase it. Go after it. Next week at this time, you need to be doing something spiritually that's going to affect your growth and you can come back here next week and a different person. Every week. Every week. Do something that's going to increase your faith, that's going to cause you to grow in Christ. That'll make this place really happy. Right? right? And then lastly, genuinely care. Don't just say you care. Genuinely care. Walk with your brother and sister. Hurt with them. Laugh with them. Care for them. Put your arm around them. <coughs> Be genuinely concerned. Sit and listen to them. Sit and, 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 and help them. <coughs> Even though you have things that you need to do. Genuinely concerned. Amen. In conclusion, I want to just read a portion of scripture that I found over in Hebrews. So if you have your Bible, flip way over. This is along the same lines that we're talking here. It says, beware, brethren, Hebrews 3, verse 12. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginnings of our comp confidence and steadfastness to the end. For all it says, Today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your hearts again as in the rebellion. For who have heard 
For who, having heard rebellion, indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpse fell in the wilderness? Pretty tough. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in it because of unbelief. You know what that rest is? That's that freedom we're talking about. And that's that, that, that freedom that you can live in. <laughs> Hardness of heart. <coughs> we all have to battle. And maybe you're here tonight and, and, and you're, you're not accepting what God wants for you. You've got this hard heart. And you continue to say no. You continue to turn away. You continue to tell him no. You continue to not want to grow. Well, I want to tell you something. God can replace a stony heart with a heart of flesh. He can change the hardest in a person. And maybe you're here tonight and you want to have this freedom. You're being tormented. Your thoughts keep going back. People from the past keep coming up. Tonight, let God, let God set you free of that. And only He can through His Word. So I'd like for you to stand with me. Now, Father, I pray you deal with all of us tonight. Father, you told me to speak this word. I'm just sharing what you've told me to share. But I do believe that there are those here tonight, God, that there's that one thing they're yet to let go of. And it's causing them to be hard. To not have the sensitivity that they need to change and grow. Father, may you speak to them tonight. May you take out the stony heart. And may you put a heart of flesh, a new heart, new mind, new spirit. Father, for that one, God, that is being tormented over and over again because they keep looking back. Father, tonight, may you set them free. For who the Son sets free is free indeed. We don't keep looking back to the sin. And Father, I pray that you would set them free tonight as only you can. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A church, let me tell you something. You can't just stand here and say, oh, I've been delivered. you got to walk it out. you got to walk it out. You can't just say, well, i got a new heart you got to read the Word of God, put it in your heart, and He cleans the old one up and sets you free. So, it may not happen in a couple of seconds. It might. God may just zap you like He did Paul. But it's progression. It's a growth. It's walking out your faith. And that's what makes you strong. That's what makes you change. So let God work. Let go of the controls. Obey everything He has for you to do. Thank you for listening to me.